Kapitän. Our first ace of the final. Is that the best match you've ever played? Well, I think so, of course, in the final of Wimbledon, so, yeah. It was a dream of hers when she was in her darkest hours recovering that she should play on this court. The dream is being realized now. I think I already won uh, Wimbledon because I'm here. It was pretty happy kid running on the clay. Over those years, I've always been happy to play. I never liked to watch tennis and the TV, but I really loved to play. I really wanted to be playing at Wimbledon. I never really dreamed to win it, but I always dreamed to play at Wimbledon. I love it. I love to play all grass, you know, to see the white and to see the history, to see all the pictures, to see the names on the wall, who won it. The air is different, the uniforms. I don't know how to explain. It's something historical, special. Be playing in the center court is something which you can only have only at Wimbledon. At the beginning, those years, it wasn't good. I was losing very first round, but I played it. That was something which really the dream came true. The interesting thing about Petra Kvitova and her career is that in a lot of ways, she kind of burst out of nowhere. She didn't play many junior slams. She wasn't really an entity on, on the ITF circuit and the lower levels of tennis. Even for the quote unquote tennis hipster, she kind of came out of nowhere. She really made a big stamp in 2010. She made the semifinal at Wimbledon. She bageled Caroline Wozniacki and Victoria Azarenka en route to that semifinal loss to Serena. That was the first time that the relationship between Petra Kvitova and Wimbledon began to become clear. It was the year which really changed everything, I would say. It was 2010, suddenly I was playing very good game. Even physically, I would get a little bit stronger. Suddenly I made a semi-final, which I lost to Serena. It was such an achievement, not as a tennis player, but off the court as well, because it was my first big achievement at the Grand Slam. By the time that she came to Wimbledon in 2011, she was at that point a top 10 player. She was in the midst of an incredible season on the WTA Tour. She would ultimately finish the year at number two. Especially at Wimbledon, I remember one practice from 2011. And then I said, listen, you're gonna win this tournament. And that happened. I remember that practice so well. When she was playing it, you could see that she is learning every single match. She developed that so well. When she's having a really good day, it's so impossible to beat her. I remember very specifically going to one of her matches. Uh, it was against Yanina Wickmeyer, and it was just winner after winner after winner. That was my first glimpse in person of what Petra could do on grass. The final day was really something special. She was the favorite, of course, by far. I adore him I was number eight seated. When I step on the court, when I was so nervous, but when I hold my racket and we had those five minutes warm up, I felt good. I mean, the nerves were just gone. People didn't really have a sense as to how Kvitova would handle the pressure of playing in her first Grand Slam final. And Sharapova had this aura of steely invincibility once she got to those finals. It was incredibly quick. It was a dominant final. Sharapova played well. Kvitova was just that much better, finishing it off with a clean ace, which was an iconic moment, I think, in her career. End. Petra Kvitova is the Wimbledon champion. And of course, I do remember when I came up. First, I, I hugged my coach. And then I, I hugged my mom and I got my dad. Um, he didn't say anything because he was just crying. And he was just so happy. And that's what mattered, I think. I saw them when I held the trophy and I saw Martina, she had the glasses, but I think that she had the tears in, in her eyes as well underneath. So it was like very, very nice. She just played such good tennis. I mean, she played her best tennis, no sign of nerves. She looked like she always belonged. 2011, when I played French Open, I made my third round, and before my third round, we had a practice with David, and I said, you know, coach, what happened to me? I had a dream. I had the tr Wimbledon trophy in my hand. I see the picture now of me holding the trophy that year. 
That was my dream. The Wimbledon Ladies Singles Champion, Petra Kvitova. A new champion. It's been a long journey. The seeds of a star being born were sown that day. She's kind of become, within the sport, this icon, which has been a lovely thing to see. Those three years, I heard many comments. It was just one grand slam and I could never ever repeat it. But I was still a top 10 player on those three, three years. The third round match that she played against Venus in 2014 was one of the most iconic grass court matches I've seen as a professional tennis writer. There was so much anticipation about this match because Venus was also in a very good spot. Beautiful. You kind of thought maybe the person who wins this match could be the one that makes the final out of this half of the draw. At the time, her rivalry with Venus was kind of at that stage as well, where you just wanted to see these two women who are so iconic at Wimbledon, and you wanted to see how that was gonna play out. They absolutely delivered. Kvitova won narrowly in three hotly contested sets. It was just electric first strike grass court tennis. Gets the last 6 one, 7 five. Wimbledon semi-final. And it's Petra Kvitova who takes her place once again in the Wimbledon final. Going into the 2014 Wimbledon final, Kvitova in all ways should have been the heavy favorite. She had absolutely blitzed the field. She was barely losing games. But the whole chatter was 2014 Wimbledon felt like Eugenie Bouchard's coronation. It felt like the public was really behind her. It felt like people were rooting for Bouchard to get this win. And then when she went out there and put in that performance, absolutely dominating. And I remember one shot, this running backhand that she yanked cross court as a passing shot past Bouchard. She didn't react in this exuberant way, but she just hit one of the best shots I've ever seen somebody hit under pressure and just held up a solitary fist at them. And I saw her reaction, I was like, oh my gosh, she's on it. It was one of the most incredible final performances I've ever seen. I saw the final against Jeannie and it, it was unplayable because I think she was in a zone. Jeannie had no chance. It was really unbelievable. Yeah. I don't even know how I get to the zone. When it's working everything together, then it's something which it came very naturally. In the day, I can beat everybody. In the interview, yeah, I said happy birthday to my dad in Czech. My dad, who has a birthday tomorrow, so všechno nejlepší zatím zítra. It was a nice gift. I mean, I didn't know what to give to him for the sixth day of, of birthday. Suddenly I have the perfect gift for him. <laughs> By that time, 2014, everybody kind of loved Petra. She was beginning to that point become one of the icons of the sport and really potentially being the best player of that generation. I remember I went to a gym and my coaches were there and they told me. I remember that day very, very clearly in my mind of seeing some reports out of the Czech media that something had happened and so I immediately texted her agent. I couldn't say anything. I was in shock and I cried, I cried. It wasn't even about tennis at that point in my mind. This was just like somebody who's just an incredibly nice person has been attacked in their home. I just remember being very, very shaken by that, obviously. Playing of MB was my motivation to come back, to be honest. The first question I asked my doctor if I gonna make it happen and play in Wimbe in the time. And he couldn't answer me, obviously, because I had like a 5% of chance that I can play tennis again. In the beginning, I was not even thinking about how she's gonna be, if she's will be available to play tennis. She shows me like she's a really strong person and strong player. And like from the beginning, I was feeling that she gonna do everything what is possible to play tennis again. Yesterday morning, during a session with the doctor, I was able to move the fingers on my left hand, which I think was the, the biggest gift I, I could have to feel the, the, the fingers. And this was the greatest Christmas present I could have wished for. 
I had to really deal with it mentally because it wasn't really easy and I had to work with my fingers as well, even in my parents' apartment. I think actually in the tennis wise, I learned that I can somehow adapt because since then, of course, my fingers are not 100%. So even holding the racket, it's a little bit different, I would say. When she first started to come back, you felt like, you know, it's just nice for Petra to be back on the tennis court. We're just happy she's playing. There are no expectations here. The greatest victory is that she can step out on court. How she comes up from such a, a things, it, it is incredible that she came back and she's still playing like unbelievable. It takes so much strength to get to that point where you can just concentrate on that and nothing else. To me, it's still what I marvel at is the mental strength. The she said this match would be her final. She's won her final. No one knows how hard I had to work to, to be back. So, But on the other hand, it's... Uh, it's been great to, to be here again. I mean, it was my goal to, to play this event this year, and uh, that's what I did. So deep myself, I'm very, I feel very you know, grateful to have this, this option to play. I think I learned that I'm a little fighter, not only on the court, but off the court even more probably. It was pretty difficult. I'm still scared to go alone, especially during the night. Still with me, but it's getting better by the time, but probably it will be never gone. And when I played the matches, I was like, okay, I already won the biggest fight. I mean, I don't have to win anything, but still you wanted to win. I wanted to get better. I wanted, you know, to play on the level which I used to. In the US Open, when I lost to Venus in the three sets and the um, quarter final, that was the, the tournament and I was like, okay, I'm able to face the best in the world. And that was something for me very like significant. I was there when she won the semis. She was extremely happy, but kind of like also in shock. It was great to see her succeed after such a trauma. For us was the miracle like to make another Grand Slam. She lost in three sets. Of course, after the, after the match, Petra was really sad, but I was really proud of her. She played the, one of the, her best tennis that time. So I, I was really proud of her. Probably not so many persons was believing that, that she can make it and I'm happy for her. To not feel those last two fingers, which are essential, to me that's just astonishing. Forget the emotional and, and mental aspect of it and the trauma, but just the physical aspect of it is amazing that she's been able to play this well. Thank you for everything, but um, mostly um, thank you for sticking with me, um, even we didn't know if I if I was able to hold the racket again. Um. every single day um, supporting me and uh, staying positive for me, which I really needed. It um, probably wasn't really easy, so thank you so much. Already that I played tennis was, you know, winning, but to be in the final of the Grand Slam again after this, it's meant uh, a lot, for sure. This loss was very, very painful, but on the other hand, I was so happy about whole two weeks and being in the final and uh, everything. <laughs>